wasn't doing well. Uh, well, I actually, actually, Lois is, Lois is recovering from, uh, from the flu, but, uh, other than that, I'm doing well. He is. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you're recovering good on the right side. Did she didn't tell her what I said. I don't know. I don't know if she's on yet or not. I'm at. I'm at the church, but uh. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, she's on. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to be getting on there a little bit. Yeah, I forgot you were in Goldsboro this morning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Don't don't sound like men on this morning, Reverend Lewis. Yeah, there was, there was four that was on, uh, probably, probably a little, a little slow. You know, yeah, they're a little slow this morning. Uh, after holiday and, uh, adjusting to the weather and everything. That's right. Uh, yes. And I so see you ten, o- 10 o'clock on my watch this morning, so we want to go and open up this morning. We don't want to hesitate and be a little late getting started, but we want to go and open up. And we asked someone to keep the minutes this morning. I know, uh, look, uh, mother, uh, first lady, she is out this day, this morning and stuff, but, uh, with somebody else coming in and take, do the minutes for us this morning. Well, I can't hardly keep up with what I write, so I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> We're, okay. I don't know who, I don't know who all is on this morning, but, uh, even if, even if not, uh, uh, we will, we will carry, carry on. Uh, this eight, are you on this morning? She must not be on. Mother, Mother Johnson, you on this morning? Good morning, Mother Johnson. I'm here, Dick and Rick. Okay, then. Thank you. Uh, That's down a little uh, boy. Okay, but you can't. You ain't got to say much, but you can keep the minutes for me this morning, sure. Thank you very much. All right. All right. <clears throat> but like I said, we're going gonna, gonna to get started this morning and and uh, get Mother Barn and lead us in a song this morning and Brother Faith and do a prayer for us this morning. Then we'll come in with our uh, trustee Nancy for the Sunday school lesson this morning. I am weak but that strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied alone. As I walk, let me walk close to thee. Through this world of toils and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? I will, who will be my burden share and the deep. Dear Lord, none but thee, just a close to walk with thee. Great Jesus is my plea, daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Get this for today. All right. Thank you, Mother Bond, for the song this morning. You're welcome. Has Reverend Faith to do the prayer for us this morning? I'll do the, I'll do the prayer this morning. <clears throat> hey, Father, okay. Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for another day that you're blessed and sweet and allowed us to come back together for this Sunday school. Father, we pray that I will bless the teacher this morning. Bless all those that's under the sound of her voice to the Lord that 
her words, dear Lord, may touch the hearts and minds of your people, dear Lord, that we may let that word seek deep within our hearts, dear Lord, that we may be live according to the word that you would have us to do, dear Lord, that we may be better people for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. you for this prayer this morning. Now we have turned over to our Sunday school teacher this morning, Sister Nancy Williams. Good morning, Sister Nancy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And we hope you, and we hope you had a happy Thanksgiving this past week. I did. Year. I did. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Our lesson for today is from the book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, 10 through 18 verse. And the subject is Tools Available to Withstand Injustice and Evil. Mm-hmm. If we ever need these kind of tools, we need them now. That's right. And Paul tells the Ephesians, he says, uh, he said, last of all, say, I want, want to remind you that your strength must come from the Lord's mighty power within you. He said, put on all God's armor so you'll be able to stand up to everything the devil throws at you. He said, for we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies. The evil rulers of the unseen world and against large numbers of wicked spirits in the spirit world. He said, so you say use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy whenever he attacks and when it's all over, you'll still be standing up. He said, he said, but to do this, you need, you need the strong belt of truth and the breastplate of God's righteousness. <clears throat> Uh, he said, wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace to God. In every battle, you would need faith as your shield to stop the fiery darts uh, aimed at you by Satan. And he said, and, and you would need the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He said, pray all the time. Ask God for anything in line with the Holy Spirit witches. Plead with him. Remind him on your knees and keep praying earnestly for all Christians everywhere. And as we look at this lesson, we look at the armor that he's talking about. Uh, <clears throat> and he talks about the preparation of the vow. Paul calls for believers to, he said, to be empowered, to empower with God's power. And prepare for battle by putting on the armor of God. He commands the leaders to strengthen themselves in the Lord. He said, before you go into combat for the Lord, you need some power. Mm-hmm. He says, it is much like an athlete preparing, <clears throat> preparing for athletic competition. He says, um, the, before he can earn that uniform for that, for that team, he must first Strengthen through conditioning. We have weight training. We have practice. And he said, that's what we need to do. So if not, when it's time to put on the team uniform and play the game, he will not, he will fail. He won't be ready. He won't be able. So Paul said, before you grab your ammunition, get some strength. And Paul said, we do not need to, we do not struggle against people, but against evil spirits. These spirits, uh, these spiritual enemies are all a part of the army under the leadership of the devil. And his mission is knocking Christians off, the, off their standing and discrediting the witness of the believers. And he talks about that uniform. Now, God gives the believer a complete set of equipment, providing everything they would need to be successful in battle. Let's look at the different pieces of armor starting with the head. Um, they said the helmet of salvation. Now the head is communication. The head is the communication center. The first thing a Christian must know is that he or she is saved. And he must wear that knowledge of his salvation as a helmet. His sins are covered. He's under the protection and covering 
of Lord Jesus Christ. The head must be protected at all costs. And then he talked about the breastplate of righteousness. So the next part of of is to be covered is the chest area, place where the heart is located. God has given us a breastplate of righteousness. Our own righteousness was as filthy rags, so God took it and he covered us with his righteousness. Then there's the shield of faith. God has given us the shield of faith to protect and to fend off the fiery darts of the evil one. The belt of truth. Truth holds the rest of the armor together. It goes around the waist, like a belt that goes around the waist and holds up everything else. That's what truth does. And, and you get the truth from studying the word of God. Then you got the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, the word of God is not to be used. It's not a book that's sitting up somewhere that you got some nice saying in it that you go pick it up sometime when you want that, a good saying or something like that. No, no, no. And according to Hebrews 4 and 12, it's, it uh, states that the, he, st- he states that for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Jesus only spoke words of scripture, and he was tempted by Satan. And he could have told Satan and said, well, look, you know, I threw you out of heaven. You don't know who you're messing with. No, Jesus just quoted the scripture. The devil knows the scripture, too. So that's why Jesus quoted the scripture. He, he could have done any other way he wanted to do because he was in charge. But he just quoted the scripture. And when he was tempted... In Matthew 4 and 11, it said, but, but we can't use the words if we don't know the word. That's the main thing. You have to get in the word, learn the word. And like David said, hide the word in your heart because see, there'll be times when you won't, you won't be able to get, get a Bible and, and, and look at it and find the verse to talk to the devil about. No, you won't be able to have time that. So you need the word here in you. And and Jesus was, he had the word in him. Jesus was the word. He just, he just told us in Satan. He could have told him a number of ways. He could have got rid of Satan any way he wanted to, but he didn't. And then you got the preparation of the gospel. And it represented shoes. You know, when the scriptures say, have your feet shod, it makes you, it makes you think about shoeing horses in a blacksmith shop. And you know, when they shoe horses, that means you do not take them off. And the gospel of the preparation of peace means walking in peace with all men as much as possible. Jesus wanted his disciples to be known uh, as his because of the way they love one another. And the message says that you know, believers have their feet ready to bring the good news of peace. They should always be ready. Be on ready. The gospel of peace provides the footing for everything believers do. <clears throat> and it says, having the right footwear enables a soldier to withstand certain attack. Peace is to be our spiritual combat. And you see, the way... <clears throat> The way that things are, these things are out here. God has given us these tools. We have to, we have to learn them. First of all, we have to, we have to know about them. Then we have to learn them. And you can, you know, this is something you can read over and over. It takes a while to understand what they are talking about. And he says that <clears throat> we must learn these. Look at these tools that the Lord has given us. We got tools that help us withstand this as injustice and this evil. These, these tools that, that we're talking about, these are the tools that will get us through when the time gets rough. And it is rough right now. There's so, so much going on. And you see, <clears throat> Our battle is not against each other or against another person. It's against the evilness 
And these um, th- these people uh, are working for the devil. They are servants of the devil. Some may not even know the devil is using them to do his work. But you got the people who don't like certain groups of people. People don't like certain race of people. That is the devil's work. And these people are allowing Satan, whether they know it or not, to use them so that they are side on with Satan and he gives them a job and they do it very well. We sign on with Christ. He give us tools to do the job we have and we got to get good at it. This is, uh, is a time of just a hard time. The evilness is everywhere you turn. But God got somebody that wants to do right. God got somebody that want to help others to do right. And, and we need to get to learn what we need to learn in this book. We, we don't, so many times you read, you don't understand, but you're going to have to read again and again and again. And you're going to have to ask God to, to show it to you. Ask God to give us understanding because you don't, you know, you're going to need it. You need it right now. And God has given it to us and he said, you know, it's up to us to get involved with it so that we'll know what's going on. We're having some hard times and things are happening that we just didn't think would be happening to us at this time. Our time is short and it's winding up and we have to, those of us who are still here, we're going to have to deal with so many things and, and it's all evil. And Paul tells us that to, to uh, take every opportunity to pray and every moment for prayer. He said, pray continually. He said, pray, prayer is a sign of unity with, so, with other soldiers, having to, having to meet their needs. He said, soldiers are not only intended for warriors. In other words, we don't always have us for war, but we also intercessors for fellow believers who are fighting the same battle. For all over this world, the Christians, the believers, they, they are fighting basically the same war. We And these are the tools the Lord has given us. Some people probably still don't have a Bible. They have people who go over and missionaries that would help them, that would teach them and tell them. But many of them still don't have a Bible. But we have one. We have several. Most of us got the, the mystery Bible. So we have the word. And, and we need to read the word. And sometimes when you read it and you don't, it just don't seem to make sense to you. You say, well, I, I, I don't get that. So you skip over that and you go to something else. But sometimes what you skip over is really what you need. Mm-hmm. But you just didn't get it. And and this calls for reading over and over and over again. You read it, you ask God for uh for clarification. So Lord, I don't understand that. But it's in your word and I need it. It's it's a tool I need. So you ask him, you read over, and then sometimes you have to put it down and you come back to it. And after a while God will start showing you some things. You see, he tells us that we must study. We must study all the time. We got to stay in this. We don't have no time to waste. We don't have no time to play. This is a serious journey we're on. And we're almost to the end of it, I believe. So we don't have time for no foolishness. It is time to be real. Be real and with God and his people. God is counting on us if the believers to spread the word, the word of peace. God is counting on us to look after our people. Don't he want us to intercede for each other? Paul told us that, you know, just pray for each other and pray for me too. And, you know, I, I'm still trying to spread the word. I'm here in chains and all that stuff, but I'm still trying to spread the word because I want them to know. I want to get this out. He even had someone to take messages for us. Paul said, if you take a message back to the, the church in Ephesians, 
he, he said, you know, I appreciate that person doing that for me. And he kept well, no matter what, he didn't change, but yet he's writing, he's writing the book of Ephesians. And he's telling the people of Ephesus, y'all, I'm proud of you. You done well. I really am. I really do enjoy the way you love each other. Yeah, but you know, but be careful because we got some false prophets coming through here and, and, and don't let them turn on you away from your first love. So he says, uh, I'm very proud that I'm happy about some of your accomplishments. And he says, uh, just keep up the good work. And remember, it's going to get a little harder and a little harder, but you make sure you, you put on the whole armor of God. Don't put on harder. <clears throat> Put on all of it because you need every piece of it to stand against what you got to deal with. <clears throat> he says, um, we want, uh, <clears throat> God is expecting us to be as believers. He is expecting us to be a light for the unbelievers and a light for some of the weaker believers. <clears throat> he says, so I'm counting, God's counting on you. I'm counting on you. And, and we need to make sure that we understand this. He said, we got to have the whole armor. And he says, um, Paul says, you know, you would pray. Pray for each other. Y'all pray for me too. And I will do the right thing and keep this going on. <clears throat> he said, you know, because you're a soldier, you're a warrior, but you also should be an intercessor. He said, <clears throat> But for fellow believers, he said, Cause all of us are fighting the same battle. He said, you know, there's coming a day when all the believers will have to face an attack from the enemy. We need to be prepared. We need to be prepared because uh, we will be up against far more than we can handle on our own. You see, if we don't have the armor on, anything could happen to us. We could go down. We could get wound up in a battle. We cannot make it on our own. We have to have this, these tools that Ephesians is, uh, is talking about. We need these tools, and we're going to have to have these tools if we're going to make it. But if we don't know these tools, then, you know, we need to go back to the Word. We have to go to the Word. We have to stay in the Word anyway. But this this uh, this book here, Ephesians, Ephesians the sixth chapter, is one telling us what we need to have to win the battle. Uh, it's telling us to put on put on the whole armor. Make sure you don't leave no parts out now. Don't leave nothing unprotected. Because if you put on the whole armor, it's going to protect you for everything. And then you know you don't worry about nothing else. You get your training. She said, you get your strength training, like the athlete. They want to be into something. They want to be on a team. They know they got to train. That's what we have to do. We have to train. We have to strengthen our faith. We have to strengthen our outlook on life, strengthen our walk with God and everything. So he telling us, we're going to need all that. Get yourself some training. Learn to get some training. Weight lifting, all this stuff. Get yourself trained. And then you start getting right for your uniform. Learn the parts of the uniform. And the, the part of the uniform is listed here. You, you need all of it. And all of this, when you get this, then you would have the equipment you need. You already be strengthened. You would already have the knowledge, and you would put on all this equipment every time you get up in the morning. Put on this equipment. Even if you come into church, make sure you have on this equipment. These are the tools that God had given us because he knew we were going to need them. We cannot deal with this on our own. We don't have enough strength. And, and we're not we're not good enough. We can't see far enough ahead to know what we're gonna have to be dealing with. But we do know that we are dealing with some stuff right now. But God has told us He's gonna be with us. He has laid this out for telling us this is what you can do. You can you, you can use these. Here's some tools you can use. And He said if you put on all these tools, 
that you use these tools. And like I tell you, if you stay in the word, because you got to know what the word, in order to know what the word say, you got to get in the word. You got to learn the word. You got to know the word. So at a moment's notice, you can use the word. And that's what it's all about. But you won't know it if you don't have it. These tools that God has provided for us is, is great. This is, these are the tools that's going to keep us going. These are the tools that's going to help us when we don't know where, what to do, where to turn, whatever. But we get up in the morning, we get suited up with all our tools. Cause we know the devil's waiting for us. So we, we get put on all our clothes. Our clothes are these two we talk about. Once we put on these two and we step out, we ready for anything with God's help. We will only win stuff in God's strength. So what we do, we learn. This, this is a very good chapter that I just really have enjoyed reading it. It's still difficult, but I've enjoyed it and I know you will too. So we, we'll start off by, like I said, we get up in the morning. The first thing we do is go get dressed. When we get dressed, we put on our own and we're ready. Cause the minute we get up and step out the door, we know trouble is on every hand. See, and as I said, there coming a day when all of us got to face an attack of the enemy. And, and we need to be prepared because, you know, we'll be up against Wave. We'll be weighing over our head without the Lord's help. And you know, we cannot fight spiritual enemy with natural weapons. And so we, do, you don't even need to try that. But we can put on our spiritual armor and we can stand because we will be victorious. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I thank God for everybody this morning. I especially thank God for you, and I thank God for giving you that that um the knowledge and stuff to teach this good lesson to us this morning. I thank you done an awesome, awesome job, and I thank God for it. Thank you. Are there any other comments? And also this morning, I'm talking about the tools. Like you said, the tools are uh, within our hearts and the tools that our mind leads us to do things. But God is our main tool this morning for everything we do. So just how come you said we had uh, when we get up morning and the prayer, prayer, you know, I, will, I get up morning, I thank the Lord in prayer for letting me be here for the, the first time on this day. But still, we still got to have that tool everywhere we go each day. You got to have that too, to be ready for anything that's out there in the world. Amen. And, Amen. and, and, and then with that too, as um, uh, David Rick said, when you got that too, as my sister-in-law preached that sermon that time, use what you got. You got to use it in the right way. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to know how to use it. That's mm -hmm. right. Are there any other comments? Is my pastor there? Does he have a comment on this? <laughs> Hello? Hello? He must be in the back or something. Okay. So, so what we can hear me? There he goes. I can hear you. I hear you now. I'm sorry. I was I was away taking care of some other some other things. I'm kind of flying solo this morning. Uh, but uh, I was listening to a portion of the lesson that I that I did catch there. Um, we I was hearing heard somebody say that you have to have the tools uh, ready to use and. I thank God because one, he has surrounded us with people, with the tools that they are able to use. And as we have put on the full armor of God, we 
need to be prepared to use those tools where will we go, knowing that God has provided for us and he will take care of us. And uh, um, so we just thank you for the for the lesson this morning. And I know uh, we do have a few people that have joined in with us this morning, and they may have something they would like to add in uh, to okay. this. Okay. Okay. Are there any other comments? <clears throat> I enjoyed listening to the list. Thank you. If there aren't any other comments, this concludes our lesson for today. Thank you. Uh, first thing, uh, we'll be for the lesson this morning, teaching our primary lesson this morning. Now we we'll just ask someone, uh, to respond to the lesson this morning. I know we don't have some, but someone else can respond to the lesson this morning or what they have learned out of the lesson this morning. I learned, she said, uh, uh, God give us the two to work with, mm -hmm. and He give us the two to work with. We don't need to let Satan come in knocking at your door because he will knock you down, destroy you because Satan come in to steal, kill, and destroy. But God give us the real truth to work with so we don't need to let Satan intervene with, with God's word. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Robin Lewis. You were breaking up. I wasn't saying anything. Oh, okay. I didn't say anything. Pastor Lewis. <laughs> Pastor Lewis. Go oh, yes. ahead. Uh, Pastor Lewis. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Brother Dan. Uh, how many did you have online? Go ahead, Brother Dan. How many did you have online? I had uh, 16 online. And, and how many in the church? Uh, 10. 10. And I think I got about 10 on um, online as well, but most of the time I can't really tell how many until I um, go off. So we got a, uh, about 36 members. Well, 36 listening in today. I took some notes. Um, They ain't like everybody else doing them, so I'll try this. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Deacon Ricks opened up this um, the, um, Bible study this morning, Sunday school this morning at ten o three, and um, Trustee Nancy Wooten um, ended around ten twenty eight. Mother Nora Barnes uh, gave the opening song. I think it was a uh, closer walk with me with with thee. I might be wrong. Uh, prayer. Um, Pastor Malcolm Lewis, uh, the Sunday School teacher, Trustee Nancy Wooten, again, began around 10.03. Uh, the scripture was Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 18, tombs available uh, to withstand injustice and evil, I believe, was the uh, was the message. And uh, Mother Francis and Deacon Ricks responded. Also, Reverend uh, Pastor Lewis responded. And then the final response came from um, Mother Frances Dupree. I heard someone else in the background that said they appreciated, but I couldn't catch their voice. And um, I'm gonna do like uh, um, Mother uh, <laughs> Mother Lewis this morning. The weather is rainy outside, so that's what I did. So I hope that was sufficient. Any correction? Amen. All you right, did my right. part, Brother Dancy, so thank you. Look at you. Now you, now you come on. <laughs> I, I, I was recording, but you did a wonderful job. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, Dishman. Thank you. Thank you to uh, uh, Johnson for doing it also, also, too. So, we, uh, you hear the reason of the minute from um, Brother Dancy this morning. Uh, are there any corrections this morning on the minute? If not, 
We have received the minute that has been read, and we will close out with the word amen this morning. Amen. 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 And like I said, I hope uh, everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving this past week. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. So we're going to turn it over now to Reverend Lewis this morning.